Oh, you want to talk about a key key? I'll give you a key key. I'll give you the key key to my room. Why don't you come on up and see me sometime? Oh! to the Kiki. My name is Chris Sizzit. Thank you so much for joining me again this week for the Kiki, where we talk about everything RuPaul's Drag Race and RuPaul's Drag Race adjacent. If you have not already hit the subscribe button, please hit that so that you get an update every time that I post a video. And if you want to see the Kiki a day in advance, head on over to my Patreon page and there will be some information on there about how you can see this earlier than everyone else. So it's patreon.com forward slash Chris Sizzit. All the information will be in the down bar below, so go to. So... Guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. This is very exciting. So we've got episode two, which is all about the Snatch Game. I'm a little surprised they did it so early, but then again, if they did it any later, there'll be about five queens left. So I am going to use my little trusty pad of notes. I'm not wearing my glasses again, so I'm going to be looking like this. Um, but we're going to start from the top because there was a lot to cover in this episode. We have drama, we have more roller coasters. First of all, though, oh my god, how good is this series turning out? Like, two episodes in, I'm gagged. I'm completely gagged. The producers are turning it. Quite frankly, I think All Stars should just be every season because this is so much more interesting with the dynamic that the queens know each other already. But obviously, then we wouldn't be able to do it. But oh, if only it could be every year. Um, so we come back into the workroom. And the girls are kiki and chatting, just like we are here, girl. And um, it's, I think it was Alaska asked Tatiana who she would have sent home. And she also reveals that she would have sent home Coco as well. So basically, Coco was screwed one way or t'other. Which, you know, part of me is like, poor Coco. But then again, I'm like, well, if you do Janet Jackson, you know, seven nights a week, and then you don't decide to do that as your talent, um, far beyond me to uh, criticize that. Uh, mm. So... <laughs> um, that was that, and then like, I also wrote here, I liked Alaska's little clip, quip, clip, whatever, as she walked in, she's like, category is bunt cake. I think we should have a cake ball. I know we've had like the cake couture season three, but I think a cake ball, like proper, like maybe make an outfit out of cakes. That could be fun. I can see a lot of problems with jam and cream, but then again, every problem can also be an opportunity. So, we get to the, the good stuff when RuPaul reveals that um, the main challenge this week is Snatch Game. And oh my god, we all love Snatch Game. I don't think there's a Drag Race fan alive that doesn't like Snatch Game. So I'm very excited to see what the queens turn out because a few of them have to redeem themselves. And a couple of them are really, really good anyway. So um, that's very exciting. But um, yeah, we've got this whole thing, though, building up about a door. And Adore is obviously very upset. She's had issues with the critiques. Um, she was clearly upset the last episode. It's obviously spilled over to this one. And, <coughs> excuse me, she is just clearly struggling. And um, my heart goes out to her because I don't know exactly why, like what exactly like she's had a problem with. I think it's just the judging. She said, I think in a Periscope the other day that Raven Simonier's, um judging was particularly harsh and I don't think they really showed that fully but um, I think she sort of seemed to be okay with Michelle's judging but I think it was Raven's that she was a bit surprised by um, but I also believe uh, I read somewhere that Adore had had some ma like massive problems um, anyway uh, like with family bereavements like relationship issues um, she'd been touring a lot so she hadn't had much time off and I think um, it all kind of just hit her at the same time and I think All Stars Two was probably the straw that broke the camel's back in the sense that it was just like the final thing that tipped her over the edge and I don't think she was maybe fully prepared um, for what she was about to go through. Um, so when Rue's doing his rounds um, and he asks Adore who she's doing, I think she's going to do like Jan Crouch or something who I have no idea who that is because I, I don't know. And um, she's, she's asking her like about why she's so upset and she's sort of talking about it and she's just so red-eyed and so like all crying all the time and basically Rue's like wanting to keep it there because the door's saying like I want to go I don't think I belong here I want to go home and Rue's like whatever it is like whatever you want me to say to keep you here I will say it and part of me was thinking the door was going to turn around and be like tell Michelle to sashay away give her the trophy and tell her to go home because that would have been quite funny um but anyway Rue sends her off to talk to Michelle who 
gives her this kind of, you know, the mother hen routine and that, that sort of thing. And basically doesn't do a good enough job to keep a door. Um, and a door comes back um, and promptly decides to leave the competition, which is a huge shame because a door is so talented. But, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a bit of a tickly cough. So if I'm coughing through this, I do apologize. It's better than it was. Um, it's a shame to see a door go because she is so talented. I can understand why she's going because, you know, I've been through similar things and, and you just, you can't see the wood for the trees and it just everything is on top of you and you're just like, I can't deal with this. And basically, I suppose All Stars was probably just being filmed at the wrong moment for her. But had it been a few months later, she might have been okay. Um, but it is also a shame because it's a huge opportunity for her to kind of showcase where she's at now in her drag and what she's doing and just to get her name out there a little bit more. So um, part of me is obviously very sad that she's gone. Another part of me is like understanding of Alaska because there's a bit where Rue's talking to Alaska and Alaska is very visibly annoyed that Alaska, adore, sorry, is um, thinking of going um, because she understands that it's such a good opportunity. But, you know, it's kind of like I'm a bit split. I don't want to see adore go home, but I also understand why. So there we go, I suppose that's the crux of the matter. By the way, can we talk about, well, first of all, let's have a moment for Adore. By Adore, you will be missed. Um, but let's talk about Alaska uh, while we're here because she seems to be taking the competition like really seriously, um, which is interesting because Katya is like the complete opposite. Whereas Katya was like really obviously worried and anxious in her series, because she knows she's got the fan following, she's like totally chilled out and she's like a proper breath of fresh air because all the other queens are like really serious about this, especially Alaska, who I didn't think would be. She's probably the most serious out of all of them. And Katya's like a total breath of fresh air because she just don't care. And Alaska is just getting a little bit like blunt about everything. And I'm just like, okay, like she's clearly here to win, which is no bad thing. But at the same time, I think there's an element of the original Alaska charm from season five that isn't really present in All Stars 2 at the moment. I don't know if anyone else is feeling that. Let me know if you think I'm being completely off base here. But the, the Alaska charm of season five doesn't seem to be in All Stars 2. Although she is funny, she's still charming. It's just not in the same way. Um, I feel there's a focus that maybe is overshadowing a little bit. Um, but anyway, so we uh, need to talk about um, what do we need to talk about now? I think we're going into the Snatch Game now. So, oh, well, the girls are getting ready before this. The girl, this is interesting. So the girls are getting ready. And Fifi, Fi Squared, as we like to call her now, um, she is starting to get into the girls' heads. And I don't know, I still can't work out if this is her playing a game or if this is her, like, strategizing or if it's just her genuinely trying to look out for her sisters because she talks to Alyssa and says, girl, your Joan Crawford is just too much you and not enough Joan. And then she also says to Roxy, I don't think the judges are really going to get Sofia Vergara's. I don't think you're going to be funny enough. And that conversation prompts Roxy to change her character at the last minute to Alaska. And part of me is like, maybe Fifi's back to her old tricks. But another part of me is like, she's so aware that she's going to be judged this time around even more harshly. I can only imagine that really she's actually trying to look out for her sisters. Um, especially since she's being given a little bit of a bitchy edit, like later on when Roxy's talking about the change, um, the camera zooms in on Fifi uh, about like, you know, oh, I had a feeling or something made me change my mind about doing Sophia in, into Alaska. And then it's like just focusing on Fifi and she's like looking anxious. And I'm like, that's such shady editing because I really think Fifi actually had the best interests at heart. I just can't imagine she's in the second episode back to her old ways. Um, but who knows? So we talk about we're here. We're at the Snatch Game. We are here, everybody. We are here. I think this was a fantastic Snatch Game. It wasn't long enough for me, and I think there was too much focus on some of the non-funnier queens. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm so sorry about this, guys. Um, to be honest, I could have just watched Alaska's Mae West for 10 minutes. That was just genius. I'm just going to be walking around now all the time. Every time I'm making innuendos, we're like, oh, oh. So, yeah, love it. And I love the fact that she's brought an iconic Hollywood character back to the 21st century with a bit of a twist and kind of reintroduced her to a new audience in the same way that Jinx Monsoon did for um, Lil Edie. 
um, Alaska's done the same thing. So that's, that's really exciting. And um, there's actually a really good video. If you want to see more about Mae West and some of her famous quotes, there's a really good video on YouTube that someone's done. They've put a compilation together of the best ones. Uh, just, I don't know what you're supposed to type in, like Mae West quotations or something, but it's like a compilation. It's really, really funny, really, really full of innuendo. Um, yeah, just absolute genius. So yeah, the Snatch Game was really, really good. Alaska totally dominated. Um, Katja's Bjork was funny, um, but obviously I don't really have a reference point for Bjork other than the fact that she had a hit in the 90s with Oh So Quiet. Um, so I don't really know how she speaks. I don't really know anything like that. Um, and I know she's still quite niche, but Katya totally like used that to her advantage to kind of... Everyone knows Bjork's a bit odd. So she just took that idea and ran with it and turned it into this really cool character. So she did really, really well. Um, Ginger was all right, just not enough of it shown. Uh, who else was on the top? I don't remember. Um, apart from the fact that none of them are tops, according to Willem, but, um, oh my god, who was next to... I don't remember. We'll come back to that one. And then on the bottom was um, Alyssa's Joan Crawford was so good. I mean, other than the fact that she was just reciting quotes from Joan Crawford, like, it's good that she knows them, but they were a little bit like, you know, Alaska made them her own. Alyssa just recited them, but they were so funny. Um, who was moving along? Oh, Nancy Grace, Detox. So this is quite funny because obviously all, um, season eight hadn't aired. So... Detox wouldn't have known that anyone had done Nancy Grace and been sent home for it. Spoiler alert. Um, so that was quite interesting, but I think she did a really good job of Nancy Grace, actually. Um, Ariana Grande was like... Mm. Tatiana Grau. No. Um, I don't think it really can make Ariana Grande funny. There's not really enough of her things to do. Like, in a characterizations or like, idiosyncrasies or anything so I'm like okay um, and then uh, who was down from her you know what I can't remember the other two who are the two queens left Roxy's Alaska was like mm, meh it really wasn't that good I think because she was so ready to do Sophia Bagaris I think she was struggling to do Alaska and it just wasn't strong enough for Alaska such a big personality you've got to get it right um, who was the last one? Who am I forgetting? Oh, Fifi's Teresa Caputo. That was really funny. I was really impressed. I don't really know much about Teresa Caputo. I've seen a couple of videos of her on YouTube. But as one of the panels said, it, it was like a genius choice for Snatch Game because it is so easy to characterise in the sense of you just cheat on every answer and you give the correct answer. If you give anything that's wrong, it's not going to work. So really, really good. I think it was a very good person personalization, characterization, whatever. Um, really, really funny. Um, so I think she did a great job, although uh, her outfit on the main stage, oh my god girl, we will get to it. And can we have a minute as well for Raven and Jujubee for coming back on the show? Like, oh my god, I love the fact that they were the contestants, really, really cute. Um, I thought it was a great idea, and um, especially like the whole Shangela coming back thing with the hair flip and the wig reveal or whatever it was, Juju turning into Shangela. Very funny, another little homage. So I thought it was cute because I like Shangela, I know she's divisive, but I like Shangela, don't hate me for it. Anyway, so we are then going to talk about the main stage runway, which is Latex Eleganza, which, honey, I think Todrick Hall was looking a little bit too excited about that, if you ask me, but to be honest, there is nothing wrong with a little bit of latex. Um, so, uh, I've picked out a couple of them. Katia's, right? Katia's Olympic synchronized swimming 1974 fish Eleganza was atrociously hilarious. It was genius absolute genius um it, it, even the little nose clip just really perfected the look it's just little details like that that just really take it over the top um so i thought that was really really good um detoxes oh my god can we talk can we talk that was fantastic that was giving me pure princess jasmine latex fantasy at club xxl on a thursday night kind of before the party kicks off, because you know as sure as hell after that party's done, she's gonna be covered in lube and there's, that ponytail is gonna be like halfway down her backside. So it was spectacular. It, it was so good, that look, it's so strong. It was kind of like girl with the pearl earring meets Agrabah meets fetish wear. So I'm living for that. I don't know about you guys, but that is like me down, down, house down boots. Um, so, yeah, that, some of the other looks weren't all that to me, apart from like, you know, Fifi's was just like, really? Like, a swimsuit with a rubber duck? Girl. Mm -mm. And that makeup was a little harsh, let's be real. 
Um, everyone else looked decent enough. Um, so that was like cool. Alaska's was pretty cool, actually, a little bit voguish. But did you notice, like, well, we'll get to it, but Alaska's heels and Katya's heels were like this big. They were like this big. It was just, oh my god. It was like, what's the point, queen? You're a drag queen. Stop wearing, like, tiny little heels. Because, like, obviously, Alaska, when she walked in, was wearing, like, hiking boots. So I'm like, bitch, if you want to be a drag queen, mm -mm, you need to wear some high heels, girl, at least once this season. Just, just once, and I'll be good. Um, but, yeah, her look was really cool. It was kind of, like, very Vogue, sort of-ish of the late 90s. Um, I thought it was really cool. Um, so then, judges do their thing, blah, blah, blah. And um, Katya and Alaska are in the top two, which isn't really much of a surprise. Um, although I know a lot of people have been saying that Alyssa should have been in the top two, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure they she made the character her own as much as the other two, but Alyssa was, I think, definitely in the top three. Um, so they go backstage for the Untucked, and well, I'm, I'm calling it Untucked, because it's basically fulfilling the role of Untucked. They're chatting to each other, and obviously now they have to make this strong decision of who to send home, and they decide to talk to the girls. And the way that Alaska's talking to Tatiana is very much the subtext is saying, I'm kicking you off, but it's not because of Rolaska Talks. Because she's like, look, Rolaska Talks was years ago, and I can't do a good Alaska. But other than, hi, my name's Alaska, what's yours? I think that's pretty good. Um, thumbs up if you agree. So she's talking to Tatiana, and she's saying things like, oh, you know, Alaska Talks was a long time ago. Who I sent home is based on who I sent home and not because of friendships. And I'm like, why would you say that unless you were sending Tatiana home? So for me, I was like, it's obvious who she's picking. Um, and um, Tatiana is obviously very aware that she's like, she wouldn't send her best friend home. Like, Detox, we're all pretty sure was safe. Like, her Nancy Grace wasn't that bad. I thought it was actually quite amusing. Um, I, to be honest, I thought maybe Ginger Minj would have been in the bottom three instead of Detox. I don't know whether that was an executive choice, um, just because she didn't get much airtime and her dress wasn't really like all that. So, I mean, she looked pretty, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as like outlandish as some of the others. And I thought maybe she could have replaced Detox because Detox was effectively safe. And that bottom three, there's no reason why anyone would kick her off other than the fact that she's a strong competitor. So, and I don't think any of the queens are ready to do that just yet. Give it time, but not just yet. So it's basically between Roxy and Tatiana, which is actually quite interesting because obviously they were the top two last week. So it's funny how they've gone from the top to the bottom. Um, versatility, mm, choices. So um, they are yeah, talking to each other and Tatiana's like, she ain't gonna send Roxy home. I know I'm going if she wins. Um, and then blah blah blah, then Katya talks to them and she's like, I love how Katya is so honest about this, she's like, as much as I want this to be fair and I'm going to send home the person I think should go home, I'm loving the power and I'm like, well, she's honest about it. Um, so I don't know who Katya would have picked, I have a feeling, I mean she said earlier on that she would get rid of the strongest and then she said, I'm kidding, I'll get rid of the weakest, but I don't know. I. I have a feeling she may have sent home Roxy just because she did badly and Katya could hide it by saying, I think Roxy did the worst because obviously Roxy is a big competitor and a strong competitor. And if Katya sees Roxy as a bigger threat, she could have legitimately at that point sent Roxy home under the guise of, I thought she was the worst, when in fact I'm kicking her off because she's a bigger threat to me than I feel about Tatiana, even though I think Tatiana is a huge threat. Um, so... I don't know, it'll be interesting to see next week who she kicks off, um, or would have kicked off had she not lost the lip sync, but whatever, we'll get to that. So, um, they, um, it's, as they're talking, it's really obvious that Detox is safe, so it is a 50-50. Um, so they <coughs> go out to do the lip sync, and lip sync for your legacy, because I'm still liking this idea, but the problem is, right, we've had two lip syncs now, they've both been quite lacklustre as far as I'm concerned, um, last week's I think they could have given a little bit more, uh, especially with Shake It Off, and then this week it's Freak Out, right? And really? That? Mm-mm. I, I, I was expecting a little bit more, um, especially from Katya. I have a feeling that because there's no sense of urgency, like when you're ready to be kicked off and you're lip syncing for your life, you're going to put out every trick you've got. But here, you know you're safe. The only thing is that you're either going to win $10,000 or you're not. And I think a lot of the queens are actually... I, f I felt 
more so this week than last week, but I felt this week that the Queens were holding back a little bit, especially Katia, because they probably didn't want to kick someone off. They didn't want to go through that. And it's almost kind of like gunning for second place because you know you're at least safe, but you don't have to make the nasty decision of kicking anyone off. And then you can still get to the end and win $100,000. So I felt that Katia, when you've got a song like as iconic as Freak Out and she's not pulling out any splits, she's not doing any crazy dance moves, it was kind of like... Is that it? Because I, bitch, I know you can do better than that. And, you know, to be outdanced by Alaska when it's Katya, mm, girl, you're holding back. Try not to make it so obvious next time. Um, I get it. You don't want to send anyone home. But I think Katya could have easily won that lip sync, like easily, to be honest. Alaska did a great job, but I just think Katya held back, um, which is a bit annoying. But, you know, you can totally understand that they don't want to kick anyone off. But, oh well. So then... Alaska wins the lip sync and the three come out to the front stage and um, Tatiana is looking like grumpy as shit. She's looking pissed to the off, which is understandable because she knows that she's going to be sent home. And yeah, Alaska confirms that he's sending home Tatiana, which is a huge shame because Tatiana is amazing and honestly, she has so much more to give. And I was, I was so looking forward to seeing what she could bring because obviously... People like Katya and Ginger, their aesthetic will have changed since their season, but not by much. You know, we've seen a huge difference in Fifi and we've seen a huge difference in Tatiana. And I, I don't think we've seen that much of a difference in aesthetic from people like um, Detox and Alaska because they're a little bit newer. So it's like, it's a shame that Tatiana's gone so soon, um, other than maybe the twist. But she better come back. That's all I'm saying. So like, you know, she, she goes up, she's clearly pissed. You know, Rue's like, I'm sorry, no, sashay away. And she's like, thank you. I'm like, whatever, Queen, I'm done, bye. And she goes around the back, she picks up a little statuette and blah, blah, blah. And then she's talking and you can see that she's frustrated because she has got more to give and more to show. And it means a lot to her. Obviously she was crying on the main stage that she did such a bad job of Ariana Grande. Despite the fact that she really looked like her, you just can't make that funny. Um, and then obviously you hear that, ooh, Little message go off and her little reaction I'm sorry that is now gif meme gif gif whatever meme worthy just that kind of like what the shit now and <laughs> when she finds out that you know there might be a chance to come back um, for revenge just her reaction of I can't I can't she's so over it like <laughs> I just love I love the reaction on that um, so I really hope if it is a case of the Queen's coming back, because I, I honestly, I think one of the Queen's has to, one of the limited quick, let's try that again, shall we? Let's take out my teeth, turn around, put them back in the right way. I think one of the eliminated Queens will be coming back and I do believe it will be at the expense of one of the other Queens. Whether they, they might even get to choose, you know, like taking away their money or coming back to the competition and kicking them out. I don't know one or the other, but I think they will, um, one of them will be coming back. And as it stands, I hope Tatiana comes back. Um, I think she's got more to show than Coco. Um, obviously, it depends who goes off next, but I can't imagine that Alaska and Katia are going to be going off anytime soon. And obviously, then they would be like, if they were in contention to come back, I think the producers would have to give it to them because the public outcry if they didn't, if they were kicked off and didn't come back, would be outrageous. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I just hope Tatiana gets a good chance, depending on who goes next. But anyway, so... That is everything, guys. So I really, really, really enjoyed this episode. It's been so, like, the last two episodes have been so monumentally good. The fact that they're also an hour long still without adverts is very exciting for me um, because it just means we get more and I hope that they carry this on in the future because then they get to show more, like they get to show more workroom action, which is something that we were lacking a lot in season seven because they're limited to 40 minutes each week. Um, so that was that. So let me know, guys. It's over to you. What did you think of Snatch Game? Who was your favourite... Uh, impersonations. Also, let me know who would you do. If you had to do Snatch Game, who would you do? And I would like to know that. And personally, I'm, I would probably do the Queen of England because I think that'd be really funny um, to kind of, you know, characterise her a little bit. Um, and what else? Uh, yeah, just let me know how you're thinking about the episode. What do you think about Tatiana going? Do you think it was justified? Um, do you think Alaska was the rightful winner of the lip sync? Do you think Katia held back? What do you think? Let me know. Just comment on everything we've talked about. So drop it in the comments below. Um, so yeah, I think that is everything. So make sure that you subscribe so that you can get all the videos straight to your 
feed every time I post one. Um, make sure you like this video, make sure you comment to get involved. If you want to continue the conversation, you can follow me on social media. I have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just go follow me on there. Just search for Chris Says It, you should find me, but all the relevant links will be in the description bar below. Belotum, we'll go with that one. Um, also, uh, as I mentioned before about my Patreon, if you'd like to support me, it'd be very much appreciated. Uh, head on over there, it's patreon.com forward slash Chris Says It, and you can get access to the Kiki and all my other videos in advance before the general public. Um, but I think that's everything. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I think we've covered it all. So until next time, guys, be good, be safe, keep out of trouble, be fierce, and I shall see you guys soon. Take care, bye. Am I the only one thinking that maybe the very first challenge is the reading challenge? Not being funny, but I called it, I called it, I called it.